Ordinarily, when the ruling regime of a country arrests their political opponents on trumped-up charges, it shocks the country. But this is the fourth time that this has happened now to Donald Trump in the last few months, so we're all kind of used to it, and it feels like an ordinary Tuesday in the United States of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'll debunk the bogus charges in just a moment. These stemming from Fulton County, Georgia, where the grand jury picked this person, you may recall, as the jury foreman. Did you personally want to hear from the former president? Well, I wanted to hear from the former president, but honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. Mm. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in, I just, I kind of thought that would be awesome. Okay, so that's just a meme by C3P Meme, who does fantastic work. But this is the real jury foreman. You probably saw this clip when she first gave these ridiculous interviews. And this is who the grand jury chose to represent them. This was who they decided was the smartest one out of the whole group. This but is one, straight we out do of know, of course, one of the biggest questions remaining for Look everyone that wasn't in that jury room with you weird is how many people is. are in trouble here. What can you tell us about how many people you recommended as a group to face indictments? Again, this is who the grand jury decided should represent them, should lead them. The only person having more fun than her is Hillary Clinton, who coincidentally, of course, was on MSNBC last night as news of the latest indictment broke. This is the former Democratic presidential nominee, U.S. <laughs> Senator from New York and Secretary of State. I should tell you, she has a new essay out in The Atlantic on the well-being of Americans and our democracy. It's called The Weaponization of Loneliness. That came out a week ago. Nobody goes on cable news to talk about a column that they wrote in some garbage leftist rag of a magazine a week ago. Of course, they booked her. They knew that the indictment was coming out yesterday. It was accidentally posted on the website before it was officially announced. And so everybody knew it was coming. So they booked Hillary Clinton to come on and celebrate. Madam Secretary, fancy meeting you. Oh, I can't believe this. (laughs) Yeah, this is not the circumstances in which I expected to be talking to you. Nor me, Rachel. It's always good to talk to you. But honestly, um, I didn't think that It would be under these circumstances. Yet another set of indictments. Yes, another indictment, which we'll look at in a moment. Here's District Attorney Fannie Willis, who filed it. A Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment, charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. A criminal conspiracy, they say. So they used the RICO statute, which was put in place back in the 1970s to literally take down the Italian mafia so that the higher-ups, the leaders of the families, could be indicted for charges that their underlings did because, of course, they're trying to portray Donald Trump as a mob boss. And here's some of the supposed evidence detailed in the indictment. On or about the 21st day of November 2020, Mark Meadows sent a text message to United States Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and stated, can you send me the phone number for the speaker and the leader of the Pennsylvania legislature? POTUS, the President of the United States, wants to chat with them. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. (laughs) On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, Georgia hearings now on OAN. Amazing. (laughs) This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy, they say. Seriously, this is directly from the indictment. So Donald Trump telling people to tune in to OAN is part of the conspiracy. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Michael A. Roman sent a text message to unindicted co-conspirator individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, stated, they can't even write this right, it should be stating, stating that he had spoken to Misty Hampton and asked unindicted co-conspirator individual 4 to get Misty Hampton to attend the hearing before the Georgia House of Representatives Governmental Affairs Committee on December 10th, 2020. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 
On or about the 11th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer reserved room 216 at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County, Georgia, for the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. So wanting to audit the signatures on the mail-in ballots to try to verify whether or not the people who supposedly voted on them and signed them and mailed them in actually did so, that is undermining our democracy. And so is Donald Trump telling people to watch television. But if you're Hillary Clinton and you send 110 classified documents through your secret unsecured email, hoping to avoid any kind of oversight, then you're not charged with any crimes at all. From the group of 30,000 emails returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. And some of those mysteriously showed up on Anthony Weiner's laptop. Meanwhile, this is the supposed president of the United States. Will you come talk about the Hawaii response, Mr. President? He literally smiled and said no comment. Not even a quick, yeah, it's terrible. We're doing everything we can. We're getting FEMA there. The National Guard, we're mobilizing all the possible resources we can to help those people. No comment. And this was President Trump in good spirits before the indictment, anticipating the inevitable. Every time they file an indictment, we go way up in the polls. We need one more indictment to close out this election. <laughs> one more indictment. And this election is closed out. Nobody has even a chance. We've already defeated the Republicans. There are two and three and one. Some people live for the fight, and it does appear to be energizing Donald Trump even more. And by the way, have you ordered your Wanted for President shirt yet from my online store at markdash.com? If not, then click the link in the description below. Like all of my designs, it's available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdash.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.